It's no secret that Apple thinks tablet computing is the future. And I mean, at the end of the day, What's a computer? It is hard to blame them when they absolutely topple sales charts with over 70% tablet market share. And I mean, look, for many people, something like an iPad can be a genuine computer replacement. For others though, people like me, it can't, at least not yet. The problem is that Apple no longer offers a low-end Mac, instead redirecting those consumers to the iPad. Now, they do offer low-end Macs, they just don't offer low-priced Macs. Apple is only the fourth best-selling computer maker in the world, with a mere 6.8% market share. However, their ASP, that means their average sales price, is nearly $1,300 per Mac, which puts them at number two in total revenue, just behind Lenovo, despite selling one-third the number of units. What I'm saying is, this business model is working for Apple, and they are not going to be offering anything on the low end, any budget Mac, anytime soon. So, if you want the macOS experience but can't justify buying Apple hardware, the Hackintosh community has been thriving for a number of years, and we've done several desktop builds here on this channel in the past. But the reality is, is that most people want to own and want to purchase laptops. So we've built what I believe to be the cheapest Mac you can get, period. And it just so happens to be a 15.4 inch MacBook alternative for $279. We call it Whackbook Pro. The best part, everything works. Well, everything except for the SD card slot reader, which who cares? But you will care about our sponsor for this video, Dashlane. Protect yourself online and never forget another password with Dashlane Premium. Sign up free today with the link below. The Lenovo laptop used is currently listed for $379 at bestbuy.com, but we picked it up for $279 a couple weeks ago during a back to school promotion deal. Now that specific Best Buy deal is gone, but you can find them elsewhere online for about the same price we did. So for less than $300, you really do have to temper your expectations when it comes to specs. The CPU is a dual core i3-8130U with a base clock speed of 2.2 gigahertz and 3.5 gigahertz boost with Intel UHD graphics 620. It ships with a mere four gigabytes of RAM and a 128 gigabyte SSD. Now, these specs aren't horrible, they're just not good, but for the price, they're fine. The biggest area of compromise is the display. I'm kind of spoiled by good displays, but this thing is just awful. I mean, it is a low resolution panel at 1366 by 768, which while poor, can be tolerable. What is not tolerable, however, is the horrid viewing angles, uneven and dim backlighting, heinous color accuracy, and atrocious response time. It's just a really, 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 really bad display. Now, what we didn't do because we were short on time, but what you could do for a massive quality of life improvement is replace the display with one of the many third-party IPS models floating around on the market. Because of the pin configuration on the ribbon cable, you're sadly going to need to stick with a 768p resolution, but you can at least get a better quality display. Better viewing angles, better brightness, better color accuracy, and more. Okay, so the laptop packs specs that are nearly sufficient to run macOS Mojave, but not quite there. Apple recommends a minimum of eight gigabytes of RAM, and we only have four gigs soldered to the motherboard. Furthermore, the machine doesn't have any onboard ethernet, and the Wi-Fi card included with the laptop is not macOS compatible. So I cracked this baby open, which was extremely easy to do by the way, and did just that. I installed an extra four gigs of RAM, which I had gotten for less than $20 on Amazon. I'll link all of this stuff down below, by the way, and fit it into the single DIMM slot available on the motherboard. I think it's pretty cool that even though the base memory is soldered, Lenovo permits additional user expansion. After that, I replaced the wireless LAN card that came with the laptop in favor of a Broadcom card that's supported natively by macOS. This is a very easy process. You just pull off the coax antenna connectors, remove, replace, repeat, and that's it. But before we seal this thing back up, I want to point out just a few things that are pretty interesting and funny. For one, the battery is tiny. Battery life with Windows 10S, which the laptop ships with, is similar to macOS, and both are pretty terrible. I mean, you'll be, even doing light laptop work, lucky to get three hours out of this machine. 
The battery is only 30 watt hours, which is a clear cost cutting measure to get this laptop out to consumers as cheaply as possible. There's just a huge amount of dead space inside this laptop where there aren't any components in sight. It's quite a contrast from the MacBooks, which are packed so tightly uh, with boards and batteries that they can barely close shut. Uh, there's a generic 128 gigabyte SATA SSD, which you could upgrade cheaply if you wanted to for more storage, which is kind of nice. Also of note, the motherboard doesn't have a dedicated GPU on it, but you can see that the board is ready to be flowed with those components. There's a space to solder a GPU. Why? Well, they just use the same motherboard design on higher end configurations for those that offer a graphics chip. Kind of neat. Nerd time's over. It's time to seal this thing back up and install macOS. Now, I'm not going to go through a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do this in this video because that's boring and it's subject to change in the future, but the installation was refreshingly easy. This is a pretty popular model of laptop in the Hackintosh community. And so there are a bunch of people that have already done all of the hard work in troubleshooting and gathering the needed files that kind of go above and beyond your standard Hackintosh desktop installation. Now, what I will do is link below to a forum post that I have created, which helps users go through a step-by-step -step process, which kind of saves you all the pain and anguish of tracking down all the tutorials and files linked all over the web like I had to hunt down. So all in all, I would say that this is a pretty installation. The whole thing probably took start to finish less than an hour. It's, it's really not bad at all. Once the macOS install is complete, that's it. Enjoy your new laptop. You should note that basically everything works excellently. The trackpad works well and even supports macOS's multi-touch gestures, which honestly kind of surprised me. Though the location of the trackpad to the left of the laptop's chassis drives me absolutely bonkers. That's kind of Lenovo's problem though. The keyboard adjusts the volume, supports modifier keys, and while there's a lot of chassis flex in the keyboard, it actually feels nicer to type on than I expected. More than passable for a sub $300 laptop Laptop. And unlike a MacBook Pro, probably won't break. Audio works perfectly, although the speakers sound pretty crappy, so you're going to want to stick to headphones or Bluetooth audio, which, yes, does work just fine. The microphone is also supported, which allows for integrated Siri support. Nice. The built-in camera even works, and nothing says $279 laptop quite like this webcam quality. On second thought, that's actually not that horrible compared to the dismal webcam on the current generation MacBook Air. All our plentiful I.O. works just great, save for the SD card slot, and boy, it feels super strange seeing this many ports on a laptop. Hopefully Apple brings this cutting edge feature to the MacBook line someday. <laughs> Wi-Fi works just swell, and all the features you'd expect with that, like AirDrop, continuity clipboard, and more, work just fine though I did have a bit of an issue getting the machine to show up in the Find My app. Now, I did not set up iMessage nor FaceTime because I'm currently on the Galaxy Note 10, but others have reported success, and I will link to those tutorials in my form post that I mentioned earlier. So the screen kind of sucks, but general performance is excellent. Better, in fact, than I expected. So I took to the benchmarks to see how she'd perform, and holy smokes, this machine outbenches the newest MacBook Air in the new Geekbench 5, as well in Cinebench R20. And even during our in-house Final Cut benchmark, it came closer to the base model 13-inch MacBook Pro than it did the 13-inch MacBook Air. Nice! Now, because there's no dedicated GPU, Gaming performance is well, it's pretty dismal. Although, thanks to the insanely low screen resolution, you can actually play less intensive titles just fine, so long as there's native macOS support. So, does Apple need to be worried about this laptop? <laughs> no, not really. I mean, this is in a segment that they have zero interest in serving. And while the quality of the hardware is passable for $300, it's not great, and it would never in a million years appear on Apple.com. That said, for students, for beginning developers, or just normal users who want the experience of macOS but can't afford an Apple laptop, this is a great option that you should seriously consider. And I mean, look, it, <laughs> it outbenches the MacBook Air, and it's less than $300. Come on, Tim, at least admit that that's a little bit funny. Do you know what else is funny? Someone logging into your bank account and stealing all of your money because you use the same password for your bank as you do for Yahoo Answers. Oh no, wait, that's not funny, that sucks. Protect yourself online with Dashlane, which can generate, store, and autofill your passwords securely. But storing passwords is just one part of the equation, and Dashlane Premium provides instant online protection. 
Their identity dashboard gives you key metrics on the strength of your password database, allows you to change many passwords with just one click. So no more logging in, finding the password reset form, yada, yada, one click and you're done. You get dark web monitoring, which lets you know if any of your information is being leaked or stolen and sold online. And an included VPN encrypts your online activity, which allows you to browse anonymously, securely, and imperviously on insecure networks all around the world. All of this and more is included when you sign up for Dashlane Premium, which you can try free by visiting the link in the video description. And when you decide to sign up, use the code SNAZZYLABS at checkout to save 10%. You supporting our advertisers helps us well, be able to make cool videos like this. So we'd really appreciate it if you check them out. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a like if you enjoyed it. If you didn't, well, that other button seems to work okay too. Get subscribed for more awesome tech videos like these and enable the bell for notifications. But most importantly, and as always, stay snazzy.